person of electrical sector here in the workshop. Uh, Dr. João Adilou uh, had graduation, had undergraduation here by electrical engineer department in the master by Federal University of Santa Catarina in the PhD by Department of Electrical Engineer of, the, of Brasilia. Uh, currently, he is with the National Electric System Operator, uh, ONS, where he managed the pre-operation area of the National Internet System and presently managed the real-time operation area of the North Central West Regional System. So, I pass the word to talk. Well, thank you. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here, to be invited to be here and do this presentation. And let's start. Uh, well, as Dan Professor Damasen said, I work in the ONS that is responsible for the National Electrical System Operation. And we, uh, uh, my, I, my presentation is to give uh, an overview of the impacts of the new scenario of the power system. We have a traditional supply chain that is generation segment and the transmission segment and the, in the other side the customers and the distributors and the customers and we are facing a, a, a change that is uh, giving this new configuration we have the, the generation the customers using the same grid in, in different ways and so that's what we are talking we'll talk about we have these drivers of this change there are the climate change that is improving the introduction of the renewable renewable generation and uh, we have concerns about cyber attacks and we are facing decarbonization there is change of full mix, decentralization of the, the generation, power generation, electrical vehicles. We have aging infra infrastructures that is causing the, 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 commissioning, the commissioning of traditional power generation. And we also have new actors, like uh, new energy suppliers, like Google, Apple, Tesla, and also the, uh, the new actor, that it, there are the aggregators, which represent customers that have some generation and sell this generation in the market. So in this picture, we see the, the renewables pushing the traditional generation plants, and that's what's starts to happen now. Sorry. We have this renewable generation uh, mainly in wind, wind production, wind power production, and also uh, solar production. But in, in wind, pro wind power production, we have had in 2016 uh, a great uh, increase, mainly in China, followed by USA. Brazil also took part in this new installed capacity in 2016 with 4% of the increase. And this wind power generation in Brazil is nowadays around 10,000 megawatts, and we have mainly in the northeast region and in the south. And we are supposedly will reach 20,000 megawatts by 2019. And this, this kind of power, wind power, has a problem 
that is the variability of production. We can see here in this example that is from Germany. The power injection varies along the, the days, uh, intraday and along uh, between days, it varies a lot, as you can see. It goes from high production to very low production, differently between days and intraday also. This variability here, we have some examples in Brazil, like this picture in up here. We have the one day, let's see the previous day, we have this behavior, this profile in wind generation. In the next day, we have a completely different profile. We see a, a deviation of more than 2,000 megawatts in the same hour of the day. In a single plant, we also can see in, a, in one day, we have no generation. In the next day, we have the whole plant generation. So it's really di difficult to provide, to forecast the production of wind power. Talking about photovoltaic power generation, we also have a big uh, increase all over the world. We have here a pre pre uh, prediction of in 2019, increase in around 20% in the whole world. In Brazil, we also expect an increase more than 100%. In Brazil, we have a, a great potential to power solar power pr production because we have one of the biggest irradiance in the world. But this kind of production has the same problem of variability as the wind power production. We can see here again in an example from Germany in uh, some days, we can see some days with low production and the other day with a high production. And intraday also a big variability. And this is because we, if you have a sunny day, we have a great production. If you have a cloudy day, we cannot product, produce too much. So this is a, an, a also variability problem that comes with the photovoltaic production. The, this increase of this kind of renewable uh, generation is being possible because of this price reduction, around 8% of price reduction from 2010 to 2016. And one other concern is that it's because this renewable production is penetrating in the distribution grid. More than 90% is located in the distribution. Only about 5% is being located in the transmission grid. As you can see, as the, the voltage becomes lower, the more is the generation located in the grid. So we see here more than 110 kilovolts, only connection in the transmission. But in the low voltage, it's all photovoltaic production uh, where it's located. Another uh, impact is being caused by the electric vehicles evolution. We can see in this curve here that it's been, uh, it's, it's been increasing fast and it's uh, in 2000, I think, okay, 30, we uh, will be in the world having more than 140 vehicles in electrical vehicles. And we 
see here in by 2020, it's expected that Norway have about around 30% of their vehicles in electric. Brazil will be 0.3 if it's, I can see it from here, but something like that. And this, this uh, vehicles also cause problem to the system operation because they have to be charged. And so when they are char being charged, the loads of the system changes in that moment, and mainly at night. Another factor is the, the new actor that is the prosumer. The prosumer is the consumer that's also a productor. It can have, like us in our house, we may have a photovoltaic generation in rooftops and can consume our production and also uh, supply the, the grid with the excess production that we have. So now we have the net energy met metering that can make this balance and compensate what we are consuming and what we are producing and supplying the system. Well, the, the considering all of all these factors that we, uh, we talked about, we see that the consumption is being decreasing about 0.5% in the residential consumption and industrial and commercial about 4%. This is what is expected in the future for the next years. And another impact of these factors is in, on, on load profile. We usually had this profile that is this curve like here. 2012, it still had this traditional profile. And it's become each, each year more uh, different. And we see 2013, it started to change. 14, 15, 16, 17, we are nowadays like in this point. And it's going to be even more different in the next years. We see here the we call so-called the duck curve because it's becoming like a duck and the belly of the duck is coming each time lower. And this is causing uh, over, uh, over generation during this time of the day. It's the midday in the hours with the sun. And then in the end of the day, we have a sharp increase of consumption. And this is a real problem for the system operator. And at night, we have an increase of consumption and probably because of the charge of electrical vehicles and new customers' behaviors. So the increase of these renewables energy source, we have these impacts. We have this kind of generation concentrated in wind and solar energy. We increase the volatility of the amount of generation. We increase the operational uncertainty and the risk of the system secu security. It requires a more accurate forecast. And when we have any problem in the system, we first use the traditional power generation. Only in, as, as a less remedial action, we, we stop the wind and solar generation. We have, uh, as I said, this kind of generation in the distribution network. And it affects the long distance power product, uh, transmission because some lines become overloaded and other lines can become uh, with very low load and causing voltage problems, voltage control problems. 
we have also uh, problems in the, in the, as I just said, volatility in the power flows. Also volatility in the markets, because we used to have prices for long term, and now we are oriented for, for to short term markets. And this new kind of generation have no capability to provide ancillary services, which is uh, a, uh, another problem. So we have voltage regulation problems. We have uh, some, ex we expect that we are going to have some equipment wear and tear because of the fluctuation and variability of the flows. So we might have electromechanical problems. We have uh, some uh, protection problems because uh, this renewable generation located in the distribution network cause discoordination of the sy uh, protection systems, even caused also by reserve, uh, reverse power flows. As we, I, we talked about volatility, so we have voltage fluctuations, and we have some difficulty when we face some island operation. Some grid, uh, some part of the grid can operate isolated from the grid, from the main grid, and this is this might be a problem for the the main grid and also for this isolated operation, islanded operation. And now we see that the transmission system operator and the distribution system operator might have shared responsibilities in the voltage control, in the grid operation, in the restoration of the system after blackouts, we don't see yet uh, 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 shared responsibility in low frequency control. But this, uh, w this shared responsibilities are supposedly to be very strong uh, in the future. One, uh, one actor that is now being present in this in the system market is the virtual power plants. It's a company like the EU, EU, E.1 in Germany that represents the customers that have generation and it sells this generation in the market. And this is important because when we don't have these virtual power plants, we don't know where this generation is in the grid. When with this uh, virtual power plants participation, we can see and can program the dispatch of the system more properly. For uh, problems like uh, congestion management and overloads, we see some new software solutions like dynamic line rating to optimize grid utilization. These equipments can, can, can increase the, the transmission capacity of the line, considering the, the solar radiation, temperature, surround this temperature, and wind speed and direction. So it's useful to overcome stru structural bottlenecks and to avoid curtailments of generation. Well, another problem is the cyber attack that we are exposed to. In all levels of the system, the sector, we are exposed to to these attacks, and in the, the process itself, itself, in the substations, in the operation, in the market, and we also we have already had some kind of 
attacks in Ukraine in 2015. We had uh, 30 substations that were shut down, and, we ha and, and it, that caused uh, around more than 200 consumers without energy during several hours. So we have this challenge to, to postpone, to overcome, increasing penetration of vari vari variable and uncontrollable generation. We, with this generation, we have a decrease of system inertia. So we have to solve this problem. Demand participation. We have more active role of consumers in response to energy prices. Growing power market activities with corresponding impact in generation dispatch. Uh, we have highly variable loads in the power network, like electric vehicles. Incorporation of smart grids concepts new equipment for energy storage, new metering, control technology, and new paradigms, paradigms for autonomous operation of parts of the electrical networks at the distribution le level. That's the micro, those, those are the microgrids, part of the network, the distribution network, that are able to generate their own, own uh, energy and supply the system with it, and can control itself, n not depending on, on the transmission operator and the distribution operator. They become more autonomous. Uh, so we have to deploy the, the new conventional equipment able to enhance operational flexibility, use more advanced metering technology and to control and to, pro to deal with the protection system as the phase measurement units, develop more powerful computational methods and tools to real-time real modeling, continuing incentives for dissemination of distribution generation and microgrids in order to alleviate the transmission networks, because on one hand it can cause overload, but on the other hand can alleviate transmission network. Enhanced methods for the design of more robust, robust power system controllers and deal with market structures that take into account new generation sources. So the future might be like this with distribu distributed resource of energy, photovoltaic, small hydros, and wind power on the other side here. And electrical vehicles, combined cycle generation, nuclear power, battery storage, geothermal, uh, control, uh, reciprocal engines and tidal power. So this all together can make the system um, more complex in metering control. We have two-way flows, intra-grid, low inertia, and low sh short circuit power. So we have these mixed grids that will be part of the distribution system. And we see that as we have the Internet of Things, we are going to a grid of things, which is a grid with generation, consumer, prosumer, and big uh, consumption in lo located and specifically for, like for, for example, car charging, and all together using the same grid. So that's what I have to present, and thank you for your attention.
Uh, thanks, uh, the Dr. Odilon, uh, for a uh, topic very interesting for uh, actual, actual systems. Uh, we have time for just one, one, one question before the, the lunch. Professor Divanius. Uh, good presentation, Con congratulations. Uh, this week I, I had the opportunity to, to see uh, the first EV charging station in my city, in Recife. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it was so unexpected that I took a picture and posted in the in Twitter. Uh, so I'd like to hear from you. Uh, are there public policies to, f to foster the installation of more gas, uh, sorry, the EV uh, uh, stations, uh, charging stations, or it will come with the demand of electric cars? Yeah, we see that in, in the world, in, in Germany, Denmark, and other places, it's all, all already regulated. But in Brazil, it's, start, uh, it's not uh, regulated yet, but it's a concern of the Electric agency, I know. It's being discussed. And it's a need. One of the problems that we have to, to face is to regu regulate this, this kind of uh, uh, the use of the, the, the EV generation. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> during the, the time, we have to, to thanks. Doctor.